The late Juan Gomez Gonzalez, or Juanito, may not be a household name in European football, but he is remembered fondly in Real Madrid and has a legendary legacy. Every seventh minute, the Santiago Bernabeu chants Ia, 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 Juanito Maravilla in honor of him. The affection was mutual, with Juanito remarking, Entering this club is like touching the sky. I'd prefer Real Madrid among all the clubs, and Madrid among all the cities. He was a talented player, winning the Pachichi Award in the 1983-84 season and scoring a total of 121 goals in 401 appearances. He won two UEFA Cups, five league titles, two Copa del Rey trophies, and one Copa de Liga. But his talent does not stand head and shoulders above many of the other greats in Madrid's illustrious history. Instead, he is remembered fondly for his spirit and attitude, which personified the fighting spirit that helped Madrid to some memorable and epic comebacks. The most famous of them all occurred against Borussia Mönchengladbach in the third round of the 1985-1986 UEFA Cup. Real Madrid were hammered 5-1 by Jupp Heynckes' side in the first leg. In the return fixture at home, Madrid struck twice within the first 17 minutes, before Santillana added two more late on to win the tie on aggregate thanks to away goals. After the victory, Juanito exclaimed, I've been a Spanish international, I've played at two World Cups, I've won titles with Madrid, but this comeback tops a lot, it's the happiest day of my life. Real Madrid went on to win the UEFA Cup that season, beating Colton in the final. After another first leg loss in another UEFA Cup season, this time by three goals to one against Inter Milan, Juanito said to Inter defender Graziano Bini, 90 minutes at the Bernabeu is a very long time. The phrase became immortal and was seen as an outstanding representation of Real Madrid's values. Values that emphasize determination, desire, and a never-say-die attitude. Those words transferred to action and, in the second leg, Real Madrid won 3-0, thanks to a complete and incredible comeback led by Juanito. These comebacks were obviously team efforts, but Juanito was seen as the leader of them. His fighting words fueled a ferocious attitude and work rate on the pitch to the point where fans coined it as the spirit of Juanito. Till this day, any successful comeback is said to embody that spirit, such as the second leg victory over Wolfsburg in the 2016 Champions League quarterfinals. But Juanito's ferocity had a dark side, one that is sometimes mentioned in passing but almost always brushed over. His passion and desire to win often boiled over into uncontrollable anger. One of his teammates, Antonio Camacho, once said, It was useless to tell Juanito not to do something, because he wouldn't listen anyway. In 1978, he received a two-year suspension after assaulting referee Adolf Prokop in a match against Grasshopper Club Zurich. In a UEFA Cup contest against Nukatel Zamax, he spat on an opposing teammate and, in 1987, deliberately stamped on FC Bayern Munich's Lothar Matthäus' face. The latter offense resulted in a four-year ban. The violent attack on Mateus proved to be the final straw for Real Madrid. Juanito's contract was terminated and his 10-year career came to an abrupt end. Juanito was determined to return as a coach, however, and started what looked like would be a fruitful managerial career at Merida. Unfortunately, on April 2, 1992, after watching Real Madrid play against Torino at the Bernabeu, Juanito was tragically killed in a road accident at the age of 37. His death brought about a rethinking of his legacy at the club, and the man that was once forcibly pushed out is now regularly honored as a legend. The seventh minute chant is just one of the many honors that are regularly bestowed upon his memory, including special songs dedicated to him and regular remembrance pieces by the official Real Madrid website. Indeed, it is only right that a club remembers those who fought for the crest and acknowledge the sacrifices they made for the institution that we all love. But, that does not necessarily mean that we have to idolize problematic figures either. By doing so, we inevitably whitewash the negative aspects of their characters. To those who hold up Juanito as a hero, his transgressions on the pitch become unfortunate footnotes that mar the comfortable narrative of him as the ultimate representation of Real Madrid's values and ethos. But remembering people means remembering the entirety of them, the good and the bad. For Juanito to be the ultimate representation of Madridismo, his anger and violence would have to be ignored or absorbed as part of the values of the club. The latter would obviously be unacceptable for many and antithetical to the already existing Moors at Madrid. In Stephen Mendes' book, The Real Madrid Way, he takes note of the club's stated values. Sportsmanship is the first value mentioned after the will to win, symbolizing that central to Real Madrid's identity is the idea that it is not enough to only embody a winning spirit, but to do so with grace, composure, and with a sense of goodwill to the opponent. It is hard to argue that Juanito possessed both the latter along with the former. 
that does not mean that his memory should be buried and forgotten, but that we must take it upon ourselves to present our history in a nuanced and accurate manner if we are truly committed to the values of the club. That may mean reevaluating the way we look at certain figures, such as Juanito, and adjusting the way we remember and honor them. The extent of those adjustments can be up for discussion, but it's a discussion we must have, even if uncomfortable. Thanks for watching this week's School of Real Madrid video. If you like our work, please consider supporting us through Patreon and be sure to follow us on all of our social media channels.